Well, good morning. This is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. Really glad you could join me today out here in the vegetable garden. It's a beautiful day here in Pennsylvania, Zone 6. And you know, today's date is May 17th. Our last frost date was two days ago, which was the 15th. And so now it's time to plant those warm weather crops. I just recently got back from Ray's greenhouse and I bought a all my warm weather crops and so now it's time to plant them in the garden. And so today I wanted to share uh, some tips and ideas on how you can plant Athena muskmelon cantaloupes in your garden. So thanks for joining me today. So these cantaloupe are something really easy to grow in the garden. You know, buying seedlings and transplants really makes gardening a lot easier on the learning curve. You know, it, it gives you a good jump start on the season. And, you know, I bought these locally from Ray's Greenhouse over in Telford. And uh, they're very reasonable there. But, you know, here on the plant tag, they always give you some helpful information here. It says that the Athena musk melon cantaloupe matures in 95 days and its fruit size is seven, five to seven pounds. It produces sweet, juicy, oval-shaped melons with a small seed cavity. And I'm gonna be growing these and planting these in my composted leaf mulch that's amended with topsoil. You wanna to make sure you, you're growing these plants in a nice, rich compost, nice and loose so that those roots will you know, st stretch far and wide and that they'll take up more nutrients, you know, because of the, as a result of that, and you'll have a stronger, healthier plant. And also these cantaloupe, you know, like your warm weather crops, they love the heat, you know, so you wanna make sure you have at least six to eight hours of sunlight. I always say the more sunlight, the better. These, uh, my garden beds out here, you know, I'm gonna be planting this in my four foot by eight foot raised garden bed, but. They get, they get sun all day long, and so they really produce uh, great fruit. So anyhow, why don't we get started planting these in the garden? You also want to make sure, before you plant it, make sure your soil is nice and cultivated. You know, years ago I used to use a gas-powered tiller or cultivator. And since I went to raise beds, you know, I don't need to use that uh, tiller anymore. In fact, I sold it and uh, it's just been nice using the composted leaf mulch. Uh, but using the no-till method, you know, you don't disturb the, the microorganisms in the soil, in, in the soil web. And so uh, this type of no-till gardening has made it a lot nicer uh, not having the use my gas power tiller every season. And so, so I use my good old trusty garden fork, you know, it has about 12 inch tongs on it. And so, you know, just make sure you work through your soil and uh, make sure it's nice and loose. You can also turn it and go the other direction. And um, I also amended my topsoil here with my alfalfa pellets. I do that early in the season. So it gives it plenty of time for them to break down. And it adds a nice, nice balanced nutrients to the soil. So anyhow, uh, this, this is a four pack here. I'm just gonna be planting two of these uh, here in the soil. It's something really easy to do. And uh, you just wanna gently pull your plant out. Sometimes if they don't come out, you could always get scissors and cut the side of the pack. And then I'm just gonna use my hands to plant these since they're nice and loose. And so just, Dig a hole and I use my four fingers and gently press the soil around it. I came back about 16 inches and I'll come in about two feet on the end. I'm gonna plant two here. And then on this side of the bed, I also have two watermelon plants that are plant, uh, planting or growing. 
And so I'm going to just plant this one right here. Again, you want to make sure these get, you know, preferably eight hours of sunlight. And then keep these well watered during the growing season. And I also have people, a lot of people ask me about, you know, how do I keep the deer off my plants? I generally keep the deer off my plants only when they're young like this, uh, just starters. And but, but I use fence sections. These are two inch by four inch holes here. And I just cover my plants, you know, once they, they grow for about a month or more, get a little taller, then I'll, and start vining out, then I'll take these fence sections off. So you want to make sure you have plenty of room around these plants to to spread out because these vines will get four to six feet long. In between my raised beds here I have eight feet, you know, so I have plenty of room for these to spread out. I also I'll also be planting my sweet potatoes further down in in, in this this these beds. My beds sections here I have three of them that are four feet wide by eight feet or thirty-two feet long, divided into eight foot sections. And so anyhow, you just want to make sure you keep these well watered during the growing season. You know, you might want to fertilize them uh, once a month and uh, because they are heavy feeders. And uh, that's about, about all it takes to, to plant these. Again, something easy to do. So anyhow, I hope this information was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the section below. And you can also visit us at plantsmartliving.com. And there you can learn more about gardening and also how you can reclaim your health by adopting a whole food, plant-based lifestyle. Well, anyhow, I hope you have a wonderful day today. So until next time, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred.